Hi everyone, this is Chi with the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center. Thank you for joining us on this Think It Up Thursday. Today, we will be conducting an experiment. Now, this experiment is going to involve making the best parachute possible. And we're going to make a little one, so you could make this at your home, you could make this at your school, you could play with this in your backyard, wherever you want. Now, to do this, I actually want to figure out what is the best material to make the parachute out of. So I've got a few options that we're going to test out today. And you can test out whatever options you can find at your home or school. Now, how will I know if it's really the best material? I need to figure out how to conduct a true experiment. Now, a true experiment is an experiment where I follow certain rules so that I know for sure that the result I get is based off of the thing I am testing. In this case, material of a parachute. To first figure out what you want to know. What are we studying? Now, that one's easy because I just told you. We're studying how to make the best parachute possible. So the next step is to do a little bit of research. What makes a parachute work? What makes a parachute good? So I want everyone to imagine that they're jumping out of an airplane. Ready? Jump. <gasps> yes. Now you're falling, you're falling, it's fun, it's fun. And then you pull your parachute. <sighs> now when you pull your parachute, the parachute comes out. You want your parachute to spread out, right? And now I want you to think about this. Do you want your parachute to go fast or slow? Now we were going fast before when we first fell out of the airplane, but now we're getting ready to land. We pull our parachute. Do you want that parachute to make you go fast or slow? I think I think I would want mine to go slow because if I go fast, I'm going to smack into the ground and probably get hurt. But if I go slow, that's going to be a much gentler landing. So I need to figure out how to make a parachute that goes the slowest. Okay. Now, the reason that parachutes can go so slow and slow things down in the air is because of something called drag. That's D-R-A-G, drag. And what drag is, is when you have something big and wide with a lot of surface area, with a lot of surface, it can get air trapped underneath it. Think about like a balloon or maybe you have ever done those big parachutes in like a gym class. But a parachute wants to get air underneath because that force that's slowing it down is called drag. And it's when a lot of air gets stuck beneath the surface and it makes it slower. Drag is like the opposite of being aerodynamic. So you know how airplanes are really pointy? That's so there's not a lot of drag. They can shoot through the air really fast. But a parachute, you want a lot of drag. You want a big, wide, spread out material so that all the air gets trapped underneath it and slows it down. Now, do you know the name of that thing that is kind of pulling everything towards the center of the Earth? Starts with a G? Gravity. Gravity is what is going to be pulling our parachute down toward the ground. Now, everything on the planet is being pulled down toward the ground because of gravity. It stops us from floating away. So we are going to use gravity to pull our parachute down, and we're going to use drag to catch the air and slow the parachute down. Now, how do we create the most drag? That's what we're going to figure out today. We're going to try three different materials. Now, I have some picked out that I found in my recycling bin and around my home, but maybe you have different ones. That's awesome. We want as many different materials as we can get because maybe you have something that I didn't try and maybe yours works better than mine. So we're going to be trying out different materials today. Now when you conduct an experiment, you need to figure out what is the thing that I'm going to be changing? What's the thing I'm going to be really testing, trying out different versions of? Once you figure that out, it's called the independent variable. It's a big word, I know. Independent variable. But what it really is, is just the thing you're changing, the thing you're testing. So for me, it'll be different parachute materials. That's my independent variable. We need to figure out how will I know if it made a difference? How will I know which parachute was the best? How can I measure it? So we need to pick a way to measure and make sure that the independent variable is actually causing the change. So this is what we call a dependent variable. 
How will I know which parachute is the slowest and therefore the best? I'm gonna time it. And that makes sense, right? If you want the slowest parachute, the best way to know if something is slow is to time it. So I'll be using a timer today. So I have this dependent variable, which is how long it takes to hit the ground. And I have an independent variable, which is the material that the parachute is made of. So I'm pretty much ready to go. I know what I'm testing and how I'm gonna measure it. Those are the two most important factors in a true experiment. So to make this extra sciency, I'm gonna write some of this stuff down. I have the question, what I, what I wanna know, and then I have the hypothesis. Now the hypothesis is a big fancy word for what do you expect to happen? What do you, what do you think is gonna happen? And then at the bottom, I made a lovely little chart. So I'm gonna fill in some of this information. The question was, do you guys remember the question? How do I make the best parachute? Best parachute. And I write this down because by the time I'm done playing around with all this fun parachute material, I might have forgotten why we're doing this. You know, it's easy to get lost in science because it's so much fun. So how do I make the best parachute is my question. Wrote it down, see how nicely? Don't judge my handwriting. And then the hypothesis, what do I expect? What do I think is gonna be the best parachute? Now let me show you our options and then you can help me decide. So option one, or option A, I'm gonna call it, is a washcloth, just a rectangular cloth, looks like this. That might be a good parachute. Option B is a piece of plastic. I just cut this off of a, a package that arrived. So maybe you have some plastic laying around or like a Ziploc bag, you could maybe tape together, turn into a parachute. You just want it to be about the same size as the other material. So they're both pretty big rectangles. So it's about the same size. And then my third option, option C, is a piece of uh, tissue paper. This is a piece of tissue paper. Now this is the kind of paper that comes in like presents. Yeah, so that is a good one. Sometimes you have that hanging around the house. Now mine is not very pretty. I even had some holes in it that I had to tape up. That's fine. This will work though, because it's a third material that's different than the other two and it's about the same size or shape. So I know what I'm gonna be testing. I'm actually gonna add that to my chart because I wanna know if cloth or plastic or paper is going to be the best kind of parachute. So I've got those all written down so then I can fill in how long they take to hit the ground. So this is my kind of way of keeping my thoughts organized before I start playing around. Now, we still haven't answered that hypothesis question. What do I expect to happen? Which one do I think is going to be the best? I'm going to say, I think cloth is gonna be the best. So cloth will be, how do we know if it's the best again? It's the slowest. So cloth will be the slowest. So that's my hypothesis, that's my guess. And you know what, maybe I'll be right, maybe I'll be wrong. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the point of a hypothesis is just to remind yourself what you expected. So when you get to the end, you can point out, oh hey, I was surprised. Or, oh hey, yeah, I called that. <laughs> so we've got cloth, plastic, and paper as our options. Now we're gonna construct the parachute. Now to do this, you're going to want a cup, uh, probably plastic, paper, or foam, something easy, something that is uh, doesn't isn't gonna break if it hits the ground yep. and also probably something disposable because we're gonna be taping and gluing and marking this up and we probably don't want to drink out of this afterward so we want a cup we're also gonna need four strings uh, that's what's gonna help us attach our parachute material to our cup and that will form the entire parachute now to attach things, you're probably gonna need some tape. I like duct tape because it's so strong, but maybe you wanna use uh, maybe some scotch tape, maybe some clear tape, whatever you have, we can make it work. All right, and then you might want some scissors if your tape is hard to cut or if you decide to change the length of your string. So now we put it together. The way you do this is you attach one of these strings to each edge of the cup. 
So you want them to be even. You want one on this side and one on this side. The way I like to do this is actually to flip my cup upside down. I'll make a little more space so you can see. Flip your cup upside down. Take your strings and put them off to the side, kind of like octopus legs, octopus tentacles. That way you know for sure you're attaching a string opposite of another string. There we go. So I've got strings on all sides. They're all nice and even. And that's when I would take my tape and I would rip it and tape each of these strings to a edge of the cup so that they're nice and balanced. And after that, you're pretty much ready to start attaching your parachute material. So this is my parachute. I feel like I'm about ready to go. Do you remember the other material we need so that we can test the dependent variable, which is how slowly it hits the ground? We need a timer. So for me today, I've got my parachute and I also have my timer. I borrowed an iPad and that's gonna be my timer today. When you conduct a true experiment, you want everything to stay constant except for the one material you're testing, the independent variable that you're testing. So I want the cup and the strings to always be exactly the same, but I want the cloth to be treated for the tissue paper or the plastic. So try to keep everything else the same. Don't add anything, don't add weight, don't, don't use different kind of tape. Try to use the same materials all the way through so you'll know it's definitely the material of the parachute that's making the difference. Okay, now I'm gonna get ready for this. I don't wanna drop it from someplace too, too high, so I'm just gonna stand on my couch. Now, if you're gonna stand someplace high, just double check with an adult that it's okay to stand up there, just for safety reasons. Make sure nobody gets hurt. All right, I've got my parachute. I've got my timer. Now, some of you might want to get someone's help with this. You might want someone to time it for you. Uh, when I let go of my parachute, I wanna make sure I'm holding it the same way I'm gonna hold all of my parachutes. You ready? Here I go, I'm gonna do a countdown. Three, two, one, zero. Ooh, okay, and I stopped it right when I heard that sound. And the time, 0.75 seconds. Oh my goodness, that wasn't long at all. So remember when I made that handy dandy little chart before? I'm gonna start filling that in. My cloth parachute took 0.75 seconds. Always tell what kind of measurement you're using, if you're using seconds, minutes, hours, because that'll make a big difference. So it's definitely 0.75 seconds. And I have an extra little section here at the very end next to my uh, dependent variable, which is my time. So I'm gonna add observations. So that's just anything that I noticed when it was falling or when it landed, anything I wanna point out. I could feel in my hands that it was really heavy. So I'm gonna write that down, that it was really heavy. Now, I like to write for observations, but maybe you want to draw. That's fine. You can find a way to draw that it was heavy. So we've got 0.75 seconds, and it was pretty heavy. Okay, so that was a pretty good first experiment. Now, to do this a second time with a different material, I need to remove the plastic, I'm sorry, not the plastic, the tape from my cloth so I can attach material B, which was my plastic. Thank you for your patience. You'll find that when you do this, it's harder than you expect to get these uh, tabbies all lined up and detached. And that's okay, take your time with this. Be patient with yourself and with your science experiment. Scientists have to have a lot of patience. So I'm gonna take my cup, I'm gonna put it right in the center so I can get my octopus legs going in all the different directions. And then I'm going to attach it to the corners. Now you might wanna attach it to the back, to the front, it's up to you. Personally, I like to attach it half to the corner so I can fold it over. See how I folded it a little bit on each side? If you fold your tape over, for me, I've just noticed it has a better chance of staying attached. But test out and see what works best for you. There's no wrong way to do this, as long as it's the same on every material you do. Attaching the corners. Now, some of you might be wondering, why can't I do it with three strings? Why do I have to use four? 
And that's because it has to be balanced on all sides. If I have a rectangle parachute, I need a string for each corner because if I only had three, one side would be unbalanced. So that's what I've got. I've got my uh, parachute attached to my cup and you can tell it's attached because I'm picking it up and wiggling it a little bit by the cup. And it's pretty firm, it's staying on there. So we're gonna test this one now. I'm gonna stand where I stood before. I like to hold the parachute right from the middle like I'm pinching it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, blast off. Ooh, okay, interesting. So I clicked it right when it hit the ground. I might've been a little slow on it, but I got 1.33 seconds. Ooh, okay. So I'm looking at my old data from the cloth. This one took longer to hit the ground. This one was the slower material. So let's see, one, 0.33 seconds. Uh, my observations, I might say that I was a little off on the time. So I'm gonna say I hit the button slow. And that's okay. It's good to take notes of what happened, even if it wasn't ideal, even if like you're a little nervous, oof, hope I don't get in trouble for that. When you write down these notes, these are for your own brain. So I'm gonna remember that I hit it a little bit slow, that's on me but not that bad, not that slow. And I also noticed that this one felt pretty light. This one was very lightweight in my hand and that might make a difference. So I wrote down, I hit the button slow. That's my, that's my bad, that's my note. And also it was lightweight. Good. All right, so we're actually almost done if you can believe it. We got one more parachute to do. I have high hopes for this one because I'm noticing that if the lighter one was slower, this paper is also very light, so maybe it will be slower as well. Now I will say, I think that tissue paper might be the more delicate one that I'm gonna use, one of the more delicate materials. So be cautious when you tape it. Um, it might rip when you take the tape off of it. Um, it's a good thing I saved tissue paper for last because you know I don't need to take the tape off for the next one because there is no next one. So let's test that out. Oh, that's sticking pretty good. Yeah, I think this will work. Again, if you accidentally rip your tissue paper or your plastic material, whatever you're using, don't panic. You can always just tape it back up. All right, so we've got this ready to go. I'm gonna get my clock ready, reset and everything. Now I wanna release it with my right hand because that's how I was releasing the other ones. And I wanna stay, what was it? Constant, very good. Final material. Everybody ready? Holding at the same point as the others. Three, two, one, blast off. Ooh, okay. So, that one took one second, point zero four. <gasps> okay, let's check our results. I'm gonna write it down, 1.04 seconds. Oh my goodness. Check out these results, y'all. Which one was the slowest? Can you tell? It was plastic. Plastic was the slowest. That's really cool. So if I was going to turn this into a human-sized parachute, which I'm not gonna do, because that's super dangerous, I would choose plastic because it is the one that slows me down the best. So plastic one on this type. Now, this was a pretty thin kind of plastic, but what if I could get a thinner plastic? Do you think that one would be better or this one? Mm. What about a thicker plastic? Would thicker be better or would this one be better? Hmm. So now I can do any experiment I want because I've learned how to find an independent variable, something I can change, a dependent variable, a way to measure the change, and I've learned how to make observations. When I dropped the paper parachute, I noticed it was light, but it was more of like a medium light. So it wasn't quite as light as plastic. So I'm gonna write light, but not as light as plastic. Okay. So I'm noticing there might be a trend here. The lightest material seemed to make the best parachute. Now, 
if I had some other materials, I could keep going. I could try it with newspaper. I could try it with um, a Ziploc bag. Maybe I could make my parachutes into circle shapes instead of rectangles. Do you think that would make a difference? Now, because you know how to run a true experiment with independent variables and dependent variables and keeping everything else constant, you can test this in your own way and test whatever you want. If you want to try out shapes, maybe you take plastic and cut a triangle parachute, a circle parachute, and a square parachute and keep everything else the same and see which plastic shape is the best for parachute. That would be a really fun experiment. Or maybe you want to try sizes. Is it better to have a big plastic parachute or a little plastic parachute? You could test those out and measure the difference. So scientists, we did a lot today. We made parachutes. We learned how to conduct a true experiment. We took notes and measurements and we figured out the answer to our question, which was how do I make the best parachute? How do I make it? I make the best parachute out of plastic. That's how I make the best parachute. My hypothesis was that cloth will be the slowest and therefore the best. That was incorrect. So even when I get it wrong, I'm excited because I learned something. So you guys can go crazy, do all the experimenting you want. We will see you guys soon. Keep sciencing.